Welcome to Tutorio. Subscribe, like, and hit the bell icon to never miss another one of our amazing videos. Have you ever wondered how mirrors are made? The answer might surprise you. Imagine stepping into a world that seems to stretch infinitely, where up is down and left is right. This is the intriguing world of mirrors, where things aren't always as they seem. Mirrors have a rich history, dating back thousands of years, and the process of making them is just as fascinating. You're about to discover how a simple mixture of sand and heat can create a whole new reality. Ready to jump into the fascinating process of mirror making? Brace yourself, it's not just smoke and mirrors. At the heart of every mirror, there's a sheet of glass. Now, how does that come to be? Well, it all starts with something as simple and abundant as sand. This sand is heated to searing temperatures around 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. In this fiery furnace, the sand surrenders its form and transforms into a molten state. It's in this molten state that the magic happens. The sand metamorphoses into glass. But hold your horses. This molten glass is far from the smooth, transparent material we're familiar with. It's a hot, gloppy mess. So to give it that clear, smooth finish, the molten glass needs to cool down. But not too fast, mind you. A slow cooling process helps prevent any unwanted cracks or distortions. And voila, we've got ourselves a sheet of glass, straight from the heart of a sand grain. So we've turned sand into glass, but we're not finished yet. A mirror is more than just a simple sheet of glass. Now here's where the magic happens, the silvering process. This is where our humble piece of glass begins its transformation into a mirror. You might be wondering, how does a clear piece of glass become a reflective surface? Well, it's all thanks to a thin layer of metal. Typically, this is aluminum or silver, but other metals can also be used. This metal coating is what gives the mirror its reflective properties. So, how does this process work? First, the glass is thoroughly cleaned to ensure a smooth surface. Any dust or debris could disrupt the silvering process, so we want it as clean as possible. Next, the metal is applied to the glass. This is done in a vacuum chamber where the metal is heated until it vaporizes. This metal vapor then condenses on the glass, forming a thin, even layer. It's a bit like frosting a cake but with metal instead of icing. But it's not just any layer. This layer needs to be incredibly thin. We're talking about a few hundred nanometers. That's thinner than a human hair. And what's the result? The glass begins to reflect light, transforming into a mirror. It's a fascinating process that takes a bit of science and a touch of magic. And just like that, the glass begins to reflect, but we still have a couple more steps to go. Ever wonder why the back of a mirror is always painted? Let's find out. You see, after the silvering process, the mirror is not yet complete. What follows is the application of a protective paint layer. This is more than just an aesthetic choice. It serves a vital function. Think of it as the knight's armor for our mirror, keeping it safe from the harsh reality of scratches and other potential damage. This protective layer shields the delicate metal layer beneath, preserving the mirror's pristine condition and reflecting capabilities. But it's not just about protection. This paint also plays a crucial role in enhancing the mirror's longevity. It acts like a sealant, preventing corrosion and damage from moisture. With this protective barrier, the mirror is able to maintain its shiny and reflective surface for a longer period of time. So the next time you see the back of a mirror, remember, it's not just paint. It's the guardian of the mirror's longevity. With the protective paint in place, our mirror is almost ready. We're on the home stretch now. It's all about the final touches and quality control. Once the protective paint has dried, the mirror may receive additional coatings. This could be an anti-shatter film or even an anti-fog layer. These aren't mandatory, but they do add an extra level of functionality and safety. Now it's time for the mirror to get a good buffing. This polishing stage is crucial to ensure a smooth, flawless surface that provides a clear reflection. Any imperfections spotted during this stage are rectified immediately. But the process doesn't end here. Each mirror goes through a stringent quality control check. It's scrutinized for any blemishes or distortions that might have slipped through the cracks. The mirror has to be perfect because let's face it, nobody wants a mirror that lies, right? And there you have it, a perfect mirror, ready to reflect the world around it. Next time you look in the mirror, remember, it's not just a reflection, it's a product of an incredible process.